Hi friends, I'm Steph from CheapskateCook.com. Welcome to my kitchen. We're going to talk about saving money and eating healthy today in three like really big game changers to help you save the most money possible and eat as healthy as possible. Okay, real quick, I have a question. If you had to make dinner for 20 people and you had about $20, what would you make? Drop your answer in the comments below. For me, I would probably do burrito bowls because seems like everybody's got some kind of a food allergy or a special diet thing going on. And burrito bowls are so budget friendly and they can be tweaked endlessly to help accommodate different diets. Okay, I said welcome to my kitchen, but actually my kitchen looks like this. So we are not in my kitchen right now. We're, we're just gonna hang out here for a minute. But let's talk about saving money and eating healthy. So often, those two things feel like total opposites. You can either eat really cheap and save a ton of money and like live on ramen noodles maybe, peanut butter and jelly, that kind of thing, or you can eat really healthy and spend a ton of money on your groceries. While you could do either of those, I wanna challenge you that you can actually do both saving money and eating healthy at the same time. And I know that because my family and I have been doing that for like, I'm trying to think how long, for like 13 years now. If you like saving money and eating healthy at the same time, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button below. This all started when Chris and I created our first grocery budget, we were dead broke and we realized that after paying all of our basic expenses, we only had $25 a week left to buy our food. And that included eating out, but like, let's be honest, we weren't actually eating out. At the same time, I had grown up on a farm where we had a huge organic garden and I raised dairy goats and we had sheep and chickens and all this stuff. So I came into this grocery budget with a deep appreciation for real food and how much better we felt when we ate real food. And even though I knew that we couldn't eat the way that I wanted on this grocery budget, I could try to eat as healthy as possible while still being realistic. We all have a lot of reasons for trying to save money and eat healthy. Maybe you're like us and you were in like survival mode, or maybe you already eat really healthy and you're just trying to like get a hold on this grocery budget and trim it down so that you could also save for other things that are important to you. Or maybe you're working really hard to get out of debt and you are kind of in this for the long haul and so you need to try to eat healthy while also putting away as much money as possible to reach your financial goals. And so I just want to encourage you that you're doing a great job and the fact that you are thinking about saving money and eating healthy is amazing because so often so many people just write it off as impossible. But it's not impossible because I'm gonna show you how. So here are three major game changers that I learned over the years while trying to eat healthy and save money. My first tip is to take a kitchen inventory and plan your menu based on what you already have in the kitchen. So some people call this shopping the kitchen first, some people call this reverse menu planning. It's not a new thing, but I just want to reiterate how powerful it is. Because here's what happens. When you actually sit down and you make a list of all the food that is in your kitchen, and this doesn't have to take that long. I mean, you can just make really quick notes. I think I do it every couple of weeks and it takes me maybe two minutes to do the whole kitchen because I just did it a couple weeks ago, so it's really easy. But when you actually write it down, you get a really accurate picture of all the food that is in your house and then you can create meals based on what you already have. And my goal when I do this is to create as many meals as I can using as much as possible in my kitchen and as little as possible that's at the grocery store. So when I create my menu plan, then I'll supplement with the things that I might need, like maybe I need some hot sauce for something, or maybe I'm missing a spice to make this certain dish. But I want to reserve most of my grocery budget 
for like bulk purchases or items that are on sale or really good deals because real food is expensive. So when it goes on sale or I have the opportunity to buy it in bulk, I wanna be able to have that cash in my grocery budget to do that. Also, who here is a fan of not going grocery shopping? When you create a kitchen inventory and build your menu plan based on all the things that you have in your kitchen and very little that's not in your kitchen, you can save a lot of money because you just don't have to go to the grocery store. Next, I wanna give you a really great tool for creating your grocery budget. So for a lot of us, especially if we've been not paying attention to how much we're spending on groceries or we've just, we just spend what we spend and don't pay attention to like how little we can spend, it can be really hard to find a good starting point for a budget-friendly grocery budget. So when Chris and I moved out of state, we started our grocery budget by looking up what we as a family could get on food stamps in that particular area. Because the reality is food stamps and other kinds of help like that are designed to help you be able to afford to eat in that particular area and not just eat bare bones, but probably eat well. And so what we discovered was that that was a really great starting point for us. In fact, we discovered that a lot of times we could actually spend less than what our family could get if we had to go 100% on food stamps. Even now, as we've been trying to incorporate more organic and local meats and things like that into our diet, we still like to check back on that number to kind of guide us along and make sure that we're still keeping our grocery budget pretty slim. The third tip that is going to save you a lot of money is to learn how to substitute specialized ingredients. The reality is when you are on a tight budget and you wanna make something that calls for a certain kind of special vinegar or a certain kind of oil, all of those little ingredients can really add up to your overall grocery budget. So rather than spending money on those things, I want to encourage you to try to find some simple substitutions. Those little substitutions of maybe tweaking the spices a little bit, help me keep my refrigerator and my cupboards filled with food that I actually use consistently, and they save us a lot of money. So I have two easy little tools for you to help you on this saving money, eating healthy journey. One is a free week-long clean eating menu plan that includes breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the other one is a list of the only 35 ingredients that you need to make all kinds of budget-friendly real food. It's only 35 ingredients. And if your kitchen has those things, you can make a ton of different meals. By following all three of these tips, I actually created a menu plan for our family that helped us save a lot of money. It used ingredients that a lot of us already have sitting in our kitchen and it was all real food. And then because our family has also dealt with food allergies over the years, a lot of the recipes in it were allergy friendly. I compiled them all together and it's one of the budget friendly tools that I provide on my site, cheapskatecook.com. Some of the people who tested this menu plan for me realized that they didn't even have to go grocery shopping before starting this menu plan. They thought they had to go grocery shopping, but as soon as they read through the grocery list and read through the menu plan, they realized they already had a week's worth of groceries and they didn't even know until they saw the menu plan. The menu plan, the list of 35 ingredients, and Cheapskate Cook's budget-friendly menu plan are all in the description. We actually used the budget-friendly menu plan this week and we only spent $40 to buy everything that we needed this week because most of it was just simple kitchen staples that we already had on hand. Let me show you our grocery haul from this week so that you can see it like in real life. So we just got back from the grocery store and I had run through our um, budget-friendly menu plan list like the groceries and figured out what we already had in our kitchen and then what we needed to get at the store um because this menu <laughs> thanks bud because this menu plan is created based on just kind of basic staples that um, a lot of people just have in their kitchen already then i only needed to get a couple of things so here's the menu plan and this is this week's um overview and then I have right here the grocery list. So it's just got um, basic amounts for everything that you will need and it's categorized. It's not split up by meals. That's my hope to do eventually. But for now, it's just kind of, it's just giving you 
a good idea. It does say specific amounts, like you'll need two onions, you'll need three potatoes, that kind of thing. And it's created for a family of four. So after going through the grocery list and figuring out what we needed to supplement with, this is what I ended up getting at Walmart today. We got basic fruit for snacking. So we've got some apples and some bananas and then lettuce for salads, just because that's the primary way that my kids enjoy vegetables. Like they'll eat a big salad every day. Um, don't try to make them eat most other stuff, but they love salad. And then I needed some paprika. We've got two different kinds of peanut butter, some sausage for Cajun beans and rice later, lentils, which we'll, we'll only use a few of these this week. I just bought the head since I was at Walmart anyway some red beans, some cheese for pizza, and this will probably be pizza for several weeks, and then some eggs. The whole thing was only $40, a little less than $40, and I wanna point out that I didn't, I, I could've saved a lot more money if I didn't get like the organic apples and the organic lettuce. I even spurged and got organic peanut butter, and this is the kind without nitrates and all that. So I wanted to show you how you can buy food that matters to you, you know, whether it's an organic label or it's a non-GMO or it's something local, and you can still save a lot of money on this menu plan. I do have two bulk orders coming in this week. So we've got, I think, some grain stuff and some, like a box of grapefruit from a bulk company that I order from, and then um, I've also got some meat from our local farmer and some milk. So those things cost a little more, which is why I'm really grateful that it was really light on the other groceries. Um, but that stuff is for like buying way ahead. So many people think that you can't save money and eat healthy at the same time. But I'm here to tell you that you can. My whole goal is to show you how you can save money and eat healthy. Write down exactly what you have in your kitchen, just every couple of weeks, no big deal, and create your meals based on mostly what you already have. Use the amounts that you could get from food stamps in your area to help guide a budget-friendly grocery budget. And lastly, learn how to substitute specialized ingredients. If you wanna see all these tips in action, I highly recommend that you download our free one-week menu plan and check out the four-week budget-friendly menu plan. So I hope these three tips helped you. I hope they encouraged you. I hope they inspired you. I hope you try them. I'm Steph from CheapskateCook.com. Thank you so much for joining me in Not My Kitchen. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to find more ways to save money and eat healthy. Simple, su simple substitutions will save you a lot of money. And it bleh, of 35 ingredients. Bleh, bleh, bleh. And so I just want to... Very simple ingredients and not a lot of keep getting cars driving by. <laughs> Waiting for the car to pass. And with a lot of like, just waiting for another car to pass. Stay tuned.